Welcome back to a steamy Poochajaya in Malaysia and we have more semi-final action coming your way now. It is semi-final time in the Men's Open. The defending champions Australia are taking on the bronze medalist from 2015 in PNG. And this is going to be a really exciting match but the Australians will go into this one. Favourites no doubt. They finished the top of Pool A undefeated. Seven wins without a loss. And PNG, they finished second in Pool B with an impressive record as well of five wins and two losses. In the other semi final, we have New Zealand taking on Japan. And Japan have been super impressive through this tournament, obviously finishing second to Australia in Pool A. But the two teams, they came across each other yesterday afternoon Japan and Australia. And Australia. They, were, they got tested by Japan in that one, no question. The final score was nine touchdowns to five. So that was a really good performance from Japan in that one. And New Zealand, they're definitely going to have to be on their game because the Japanese are electric, particularly in attack. So two fantastic semi-finals, but... Uh, if form is to go for anything, it's going to be a repeat of the 2015 World Cup with Australia and New Zealand potentially taking each other on later on this afternoon, but they've got to get through these semi-final matches first. So highly entertaining matches again here this morning. We just had a drop-off in the men's 30s in South Africa. They have progressed through to... The gold medal match later on this afternoon. We have plenty of gold medal matches coming your way. And after this time slot, it'll be the men's 35s gold medal match between Australia and New Zealand. It's actually been rescheduled from yesterday afternoon. It was due to commence, but we had an electrical storm come through Putrajaya, which uh, affected the men's 45s grand final. And it's also forced the reschedule for the men's at 35s as well, so we'll get that match on field one after this, but it's PNG who have started here with the ball. They fire it out to the left-hand side. Oh, the Australians, they really had to scramble there and get on their bike to get over there to cover that. So nice start here from PNG. You'll see plenty of flair from them in attack, just absolutely electric. They've taken a lot of, out of, they've done a couple of trips to Australia over the last few years and come against some of Australia's best touch players and playing in Queensland State Championships in 2015. Oh, the footwork here and gotten through. So Marshall King, oh, sorry, that's Jordan King. My apologies. And just the footwork and got to, be aware of him. He is electric when he gets the football in hand. So Australia with their first possession. Get their opening a touchdown on the board. They take the early lead over PNG. So the men's open gold medal match will be a 5.30 local time this afternoon. And it'll be our final match of the 2019 World Cup here in Malaysia and what a fantastic tournament it has been. And ever since we've gone into uh, the final series starting on Thursday and the matches have just been absolutely electric with high drama as well, particularly yesterday when the storm came in. We had the men's 45s match which resulted in the teams having to go out with two minutes to play after match was suspended and a beautiful link ball there. Hennessy connecting up with Adam Pride to get number two on the board for the Australians. Uh, Dylan Hennessy again 
up there with the world's best on the touch football stage and just showing you why on that occasion his ball work is second to none and Adam Pride running a nice hole to get the second touchdown for the Australians. So let's see if PNG can respond here. They really can't afford to let the Australians get too far away from them if they want to hang into this match. That's right. Over to the right-hand side. It's been touched from the Australians, so they're going to get six more touches. Attacking the line here. So PNG, Bogart into half. Working in the middle, Cameron Bogart. Nice phase play. They come against the grain. Got them stretched, but nice cover defence in the middle there. Tona making the touch for the Australians. They come down the right-hand side of the field now. Make some interchanges. Kings back onto the field. That's him with the ball driving in. Norman. Good. The captain, back to King, Ed Norman, just absolute star power across the park here for the Australians. And look at who's on the field at the moment. Nick Good, the captain. Jordan King. Norman with the ball and outside him is Dylan Hennessy. The King again fights Norman. He shows and goes and gets on the outside there of Junior Hokey. So the speed of Peter Norman, one of his strongest attributes. As soon as he got the ball, just really put the gas down. Gets on the outside. So 3-0 is the score now. This is the first semi-final in the Men's Open Australia taking on PNG. on the attack oh, the ball just floats up in the air they drive in now they come off the right foot showing left and right oh they get the bat on play it's still held on to they throw it back on the inside the hands are up in the air from the Australian defender it wasn't played at so the Australians they reclaim possession Come right hand side again. Look at the change of attack here. They're throwing the football around. They switch in now, drive into the line. More direct, big up from half early ball. What about the speed of the ball from acting half there? That was Stuart Brighty. That was super impressive there. That just really caused headaches for the PNG side and try to match the, the speed of, of which the Aussies are playing at the moment. So 4-0 is the score in the semi-final here between PNG and Australia. It's the Australians with the lead. Oh, they looked to go back on the inside and really had to scramble across the field to make that touch. They go the dummy. Oh, the flick around the back. Oh, that's what they can bring. The PNG side, just a bit of attacking flair. So, yeah, I think the Australians will be really looking to uh, stamp a strong performance in this match. As mentioned, they had their two last round games yesterday afternoon. Oh, and there's an error here. So, uh, uncharacteristic error there for the Australians. And they've been stretched here early. Can they get on the outside? Wow, they did a good job to scramble in the end. No, it's too, too little too late. Unfortunately, I'm just obstructed a little bit from where I am standing in the grandstand. I just put the ball down behind one of the Red Bull umbrellas. But the touchdown is 
given and PNG get their first on the board. So that just purely comes down to the error made from the Australians as they were coming out of their end of the field. I couldn't quite see who dropped the ball but also dropped his head at the same time and he was looking in the opposite directions. The PNG players, they rolled the ball and shifted it straight away, caught the Australians napping. So great work from PNG to get their opening touchdown of this match. 4-1 is the score. And yeah, as I was just mentioning before that touchdown, Australia, they took on Japan and South Africa yesterday afternoon as they go that link hole again and King runs off Norman to get their fifth touchdown. And now a stretch on both occasions, the Japanese have been electric throughout this tournament. They went down 9-5 in the end, so only the four touchdown margin. And their final match of the round robin was against South Africa. And a similar score line of 9-4. So having spoken to a couple of the uh, Australian contingent, obviously happy with the win, but I feel like they probably could have done a little bit more in those matches. But kudos as well was coming from the Australian team in terms of the uh, matches that the Japanese and South Africans brought to them yesterday afternoon as the round robin matches came to a conclusion. Australia here rolling through the middle of the field. They just go back to pick that ball up. Wasn't over the mark, no problems. It's Michael Law cleaning up for Australia. They're driving in now, they're in trouble here. PNG play on the call. Hennessy dishes. Oh, it's been picked. Oh, well. It had been picked off there from Ellison Waluka. And just juggled it right at the death. If he managed to hold on to that, I would have loved to see him streak down the field and see if he had the toe to go the, the whole distance. Early ball from half again. Oh, they scramble nicely there. Cameron Boga coming across in defence. Defending out here on the right link for PNG in this set. But they're worrying them at, at the moment. Australia, when they go the early ball, big dummy there from Hennessy. But again, the middle defenders, they're not moving. Nate Wood on that occasion. And putting the wall up. That's Pride. Switches. Hennessy. Who's he connect up with? Goes out the back this time. And Massage can't finish that one off. Uh, floating down the sideline in the end. And the ball is turned over. So great job from PNG on that occasion. Yeah, they did really well in defence. But they're making changes now. And really struggling to get out of there into the field. They've got their full complement onto the field now. He's broken into, wow, look at the flick back on the inside. Quick roll ball and go from half here and they stretch the Australians. They come back out on the left-hand side. And again, that attacking flare. A beautiful flick ball back on the inside. And just hit his man on his chest. So it's a good recovery in that last set because they were really struggling to get forward. There was only a couple of players on the field for Papua New Guinea as four interchange players were making their way onto the field. A little bit of ball movement and some attacking flair almost created something to get them down the field. Fifth touch now. Toner heading back to the mark. Norman goes away from Tono, gets into the in-goal area. Well, it's just like a hot knife through butter. How did he get through there, Peter Norman? Slips through and they connect up in the corner again. Palau yeah, getting that touchdown. That's number six on the board for the Aussies. So the score is 6-1 here in the semi-final between PNG and Australia.
Oh, they've turned the ball over, unfortunately. Over the mark is the call from the referee. So just those little 1% plays that P&G really need to get right because you just can't give the football away to this Australian side without being expected to being punished. Let's see if they do that now. Good. And dumbing back on the inside. Back with the ball here again. Nick Good dancing around. Picked up nicely there from half. They switch in. Good. Oh, but he just juggles it. They're going to get the penalty. And PNG's team called offside. Hennessy back onto the field. Goes from half. Early ball again. Touch made. So their goal line defence has been pretty good. PNG when Australia are coming in with this static play and referees going to allow the Australians to re-roll the ball there. So he must have made a touch on the arm before the ball was dropped. And they turn it back on the inside. Oh, six more touches again. So hands on the football. Yeah, did make mention that the defence has been pretty good from PNG when they're in this similar position onto the field. But they can't keep defending their line repeatedly. And it'll only be a matter of time, you think, before Australia will make them pay. But they're doing a good job so far in the early stages of this set. They go against the grain and come out to the right-hand side. But look at the defence here from PNG. They're rooting it nicely on the outside edges and the middles are holding strong as well. Might be frustrating the Australians a little bit here at the moment. Good. Last touch. And they've shut it down again. So making the touch on a Michael Law. Well, that's fantastic work from PNG. Can they transition out of their end of the field now? As they make some changes at the same time. Boga, he's onto the field. Looks to get them a little bit more direct and straight. They need to do the same here. Nice footwork, it's just picking up an extra couple of metres, but someone's going to have to drive in and go forward. Oh, that was sloppy in the roll ball. Referees missed it, play on. Boger again from half, he gives it early. They come off the left foot, they come right. And they're going to get a penalty. So a penalty given away on a fifth touch. That won't please the coaching staff from Australia. Can they make them pay? B and G, it's been a while since they've been down this end of the field. It's been picked off here from the Australians. They're streaking away down the field, but look at the scramble defence from B and G. Oh, the 360, they're still going. They managed to find Musash. The uh, touch has been made. So, yeah, yeah, plenty of speed in this team from Papua New Guinea. But the ball is back in the hands of the Australians. They get players in motion again. Norman sums it up beautifully, sends it out to Sean Francis. And Peter Norman's putting on a display in this first half. Seven one the score now. Australia are looking comfortable in this first half. PNG, can they get another one on the board before we go into the halftime break? They drive in, they come down the right hand side and well covered, four numbers, Pride making the touch. A little bit of dancing, they go the bat on play, they've got them stretched here. Norman coming across in defence. He makes the touch, he caught a little bit infield on that occasion but the speed and just helps Norman to get out and recover to make the touch on that occasion. Australia now again, go back right side, changes on to the field. Good with the ball. Hennessy comes in, early ball coming in off the left foot. And another touchdown there, that was Bundy. Racking up another one for Australia. 
8-1 is the score. So, yes, the Men's Open gold medal match will be live streamed through the BBC this afternoon. It will take place at 5.30 local time. And make sure you tune in for that one. The Women's Open match, gold medal match, will be just prior to. So we're really looking forward to the matches coming up this afternoon. The Women's Open will be 4.20 local time and mixed open at 10 past three. So we're finally getting to the crucial time as P&G get number two on the board. Great effort. That just shows that they're, uh, they're not going to die trying here. They're probably New Guinea inside. They've just got to throw caution to the wind. They've got nothing to lose. We're back underway with Adam Pride. He turns it back onto the inside. They go back into the middle of the field now with Michael Law. Law drives in. They're trying to claim the no touch. The referee says play on and coming in to shut that down from the wing. That was great work there. Marlon Stephen. Law. Back with the ball, they're going short side here, and beautiful touchdown there from the Australians. Michael Law, looking like he's going to go down with the football and just pops that late pass right at the death. And Massage gets another touchdown. On the board for the Australian side, it's really nice little set piece there. Coming down that short side for the Aussies. Number nine on the scoreboard now, nine, two, Here's the score as we get towards the uh, back end of the first half. So PNG attacking the Australian line again. Bogart, nice work off the left foot. Eh, just can't connect. Oh, might have been Nate Wood on that occasion. Just can't quite pick the numbers up at the moment, unfortunately, where they get down the other end of the field. So apologies to those watching at home if we get some of the players incorrect. And the two wingers combining there for the Aussies at the end, trying to create a little trick play to get another touchdown right before the hooter. But the halftime and siren goes in the background and Australia are uh, in complete control of this one and they go into the halftime break of this men's open semi-final match with a handy lead over PNG the score is Australia 9 and PNG 2 
Welcome back for the second half of the Men's Open semi-final. Australia in complete control of this one. The halftime score is 9-2 that they currently lead over PNG. But there's been some positive signs for PNG. I did make mention, although they've got nine touchdowns on against them on the scoreboard, they have done some pretty good work defensively when they have been camped on the line. It's just extremely difficult to try to stop this attacking Australian side. They get a penalty early on in the second half here, so there's more pressure as they come up to make the touch. Hennessy again looking the footwork. Aussies again, right foot. Now they've gotten on the outside of the PNG defender on that occasion. So, first touchdown for the half goes to Australia. That's number 10 on the scoreboard. So, they hit double digits in this semi final match. 10 2 is the score. And PNG, they get us back underway from their tap off and they're just going direct through the middle of the Australians at the moment oh, trying to get on the outside oh it's been picked off here and they just pull up stumps Nick Good no, my apologies Justin Costello having no intentions of going the full length of the field and might just be thinking about games ahead and they're comfortable on the score line at the moment there's no need to uh, run the full length of the field and they might take advantage of it Anyway, it's fifth touch here. Touch is made on Peter Norman. They'll just hand the ball over here, pull out and throw on the big dummy. Not fooling anyone on that occasion. And the Australians, that gave him just an opportunity to make some subs as Norman was working his bay way back off the Ingol area there. The PNG going more direct at the Aussies, but they're making changes too, and they're just losing their way. Unfortunately, it's fifth touch now. And they just take 
the dummy half run there. Paul Matuda. Yeah, we're back here in commentary. Apologies for the short break. But the Australians, they are straight back on to the attack here. And Pride, he just fades out across the field. Good gives it back to him. Pride gives nice early ball to Law. They're coming back on there. This is really nice ball movement from Australia. A little bit of collision there between the PNG player and Pride but the touch was made so they scrambled nicely to shut that one down because they were looking really dangerous there and the Aussies moving the ball from one side to the field to another oh and dancing off the right foot have they made the touches here just obstructed from the referee now I think the refs are just calling out one of the PNG players Oh, he's actually been sent to the other end of the field. So, yeah, unfortunately, I can't make comment on what was made. I think from the signal there from referee Badger, it might be that there wasn't a touch made and the PNG player might have claimed that there was. So, yeah, it's a big no-no if that was the case. And the Australians make them pay. Another touchdown, they take advantage with that extra man off the field. So number 11 on the scoreboard now. PNG are back underway. They've got two touchdowns of their own. They've been pretty well constructed. They'll be looking to get a third. Just want to keep the scoreline as respectable as possible. And they'll also be looking to try to get a little bit of momentum if things continue as they are. Ooh, that was half a chance. And Nate Wood almost getting in underneath. And going into this match, Wood was the leading touchdown scorer for the PNG side. And he almost showed why there on that occasion. Look at them shift the ball across the field here, Australia. And yeah, I was touching back to a previous comment that, uh, yeah, the PNG side will definitely be looking to try to keep this score respectable, but also get a little bit of momentum. They do have a bronze medal match if this game progresses as it is. And... Can't quite see the score over on the backfield at the moment in the second semi-final match between New Zealand and Japan. But regardless of who they come up against, it's going to be an extremely difficult bronze medal match. So they'll be keeping one eye on that potentially, but they've still got a lot of work to do here in this semi-final because Australia have just got another touchdown. Number 12 for them for this match. And I wonder if the coach, Tony Trad, might be thinking of the next match ahead. If there's any instructions to maybe pull it up for the boys. It's just been a, a huge tournament in terms of heat and the conditions, the amount of matches that the teams have had to play as they make a touch on Kerry Mavia. Yeah, try to conserve energy as best you can. There's still one big game to come. And no doubt the, the Kiwis are under the pump against the Japanese side in their semi-final. We'll keep an eye on that. It's just in one of the far back fields at the moment, but I can see it. So as soon as the full-time siren goes, we'll be keeping one eye over there to see if we can pick up who may have won that second semi-final. But it's all Australia in the first semi-final here on Field 6. 
And as mentioned previously from our next time slot on, we have gold medal matches galore on field one. And we are starting with the men's 35s. That's 11.30 local time, Australia and New Zealand. A match which has had been rescheduled from yesterday afternoon. We're going to follow that up at 12.50 local with the mixed 30s grand final. That will be between Australia and the Cook Islands. Great to see the Cook Islands make the gold medal match. They actually knocked off New Zealand in the semi-final earlier this morning. 5-3 was the final score in that one. Men's 30s will be on at 2 o'clock local time. The Australians are taking on England. I hope that some of you may have been tuning into the semi-final that we just saw prior to this match. It was England taking on South Africa, which went to a drop-off extra time and down to four on four with the South Africans getting away with that win. So South Africa will take on the Australians. It's PNG, and they're trying to progress down the field. Yeah. A penalty given forward pass is the call from the referee. So Pavona a little bit frustrated, unfortunately, with the call. Mixed open at 10 past three at local time. We still have semi-finals in the mixed open division to be decided here at the World Cup. And 20 past four local time is the women's open again to be determined following semi-final matches and the men's open at 5 at 30 local time where it's looking like the australians oh look at that little trick play there looks like the australians will claim the first spot for that final so plenty of gold medal matches coming your way this afternoon being streamed thanks to the bbc and we hope you've been enjoying the coverage so far from the World Cup this year. But Norman will roll the ball here for Australia. They send it out to Pride. Nice defensive pressure on Pride's massage. Again, just a bit of a slow roll ball. Looks like they're just taking their foot off the accelerator a little bit here. Australia, they're just doing what they need to do to get down the other end of the field but Pride he picks it up now they go away from Pride and almost picked off and intercept there from the Papua New Guinean side I think they'll be pretty happy to make their way into a bronze medal match again as mentioned they won the bronze medal in 2015 it was uh, really, oh, he almost got another intercept there. I've got to be careful here, the Australians. I think if they pick one off, they could go down the other end of the field and score. But it was a really uh, tight battle to get the final semi-final spot from Pool B. A lot of teams in contention, England, and I think South Africa as well. Also... Fighting for that spot, and I think it came down to, to for and against in the end, which got PNG into the semi final here against Australia as they're making changes. They come back into the middle of the field now. PNG, can they get a nice dummy work? Oh, and just juggled there from Boga, but catches it, steadies the ship. Boga again, back on the inside. He'll go from a half here, rips one long. And Massage, not trouble, good defence. And Maivia couldn't reel that one in. The temperature's starting to rise out here at Putrajaya. We're in the equestrian centre for the World Cup tournament. You can see the sun is beaming through now as the Aussies are picking up the speed in this attacking raid here. Nice fancy footwork. They switch back to Law, but they're going to give a penalty away. Yeah, we're keeping one eye on the temperature gauge yet again. And we've had to suspend play on a, just the one occasion. I think it was on a day three uh, due to the heat, but also reduced, well, not reduced matches, but implemented quarters into a lot of the matches throughout the tournament just to allow the players to get an extra 
couple of drinks breaks in. So we'll be keeping an eye on that temperature gauge. We also got one eye on the skies as well. But uh, as the weather forecast has kind of been throughout this week, there's a chance of a little bit of everything. The only thing that's guaranteed is the heat. There's always going to be heat, but there's chance of rain and storms and we experienced those storms yesterday afternoon and lightning in the area causing a gold medal match in the men's 45s to be temporarily suspended there's still two minutes and four seconds left on the clock and oh a little bit of a trick play through the legs why not Eugene Mira Ika having a go so Yep, final day of the 2019 World Cup. What a fantastic tournament it has been. Really great to see the development of a lot of the other countries who have competed. And it's been increasing participation, which is the uh, positive sign for the Federation of Touch, who organised the World Cup every four years. 122 teams in total or 117 teams, I should say, from 22 countries across the world. Ah, fantastic effort. And everybody that has... Well, I've had a chat too throughout the tournament, although the constant theme is uh, how hot it's been and how difficult the conditions have been. I suppose it's uh, been quite difficult for us to really paint the picture of how hot it has been out here. But uh, I can tell you from walking around the grounds... Although I, I don't get the opportunity to do it too often coming out of the commentary box. But as soon as you get out onto the fields, the heat that is experienced, I, I just can't imagine what the players and the referees have gone through out there. Quite a few have suffered fatigue and uh, dehydration. It's pride. He looks to go out the back. They just try to, to flick it on. So, yeah. Uh, kudos to all of our players and officials. They're the stars of this tournament and it shows the dedication and the preparation that some of the teams have gone through. Look at this. This is better from PNG. Great job. Nice direct rucking, capping, catching the Australians and napping there and offside, but they were on the back foot since the start of that set. So that's better. Positive signs. They're still playing to the final whistle here. Papua New Guinea. So again, they're throwing the football around. 13-2 on the scoreboard. Can they get number three? They try to burrow their way underneath. Yeah, touch is made. They'll be told to go back out to the five-meter line. And back here for the later stages of this Meds Open semi-final. Apologies again for the short break in commentary. Just doing a little bit of side business out here for the later games this afternoon. And arranging the uh, co-commentators for our mixed open and grand finals. And uh, yeah, it's um, it the... The New Zealand legend Peter Walters, just having a quick chat to him. He's uh, going to join me for, in commentary I should say, for those uh, mixed open games this afternoon. So we've got a legend of the sport in New Zealand coming to join me in the commentary box. So really looking forward to, to having him in. It'll be the first time for us together for the 2019 World Cup. It played in yesterday afternoon's uh, men's 45s dramatic gold medal match so it'll be good to have a, a bit of a chat to him about that as well at the same time so he's had a busy tournament and uh great to see we're going to hear the insights of one of the sports greats not only from new zealand and in the world 
He'll be coming into the commentary box this afternoon for our Opens Grand Finals as PNG. They're not dying. Wondering here. They're still throwing the football around. They come into the line. Norman makes the touch. Nice footwork, but it's just that inside defensive pressure. Stuart Bridie doing a great job to cover Peter Norman on that occasion. Looked like he might have just clipped the ankle or something at the same time, but he's come out of it okay. Stuart Bridie, and he's probably going to get the ball off the ruck here from Norman. He does. Just goes forward. Norman now to Francis. And play out into half. Penalty to the Aussies. So play out taps and gets us back underway. Again, the score in this one, 13-2 to the Australians. It's just been a clinical performance. And they're rolling into the gold medal match this afternoon. The other semi-final taking place at the moment as well, New Zealand and Japan. As the Aussies get number 14 on the board. PG that get us back underway. They should be proud of their performance, not only in the semi final, but throughout this tournament. They've turned the ball over here again, unfortunately. So the Huda has sounded in the background and that will bring this men's open semi-final to a close. The Australians way too dominant for PNG. They're going to progress through to the gold medal match later on this afternoon. It'll be 5.30 local time stream live through the BBC. But in the score at the end of this match, it is Australia 14 over PNG 2.